morning, everyone. Welcome to the room. Hope you're doing well today. As you know, trading futures does involve risk. It's not suitable for all investors. Information in the presentation is for educational purposes. <clears throat> not a trade signal service, not intended to be financial advice. Off to another week here. Not quite as much news and um, economic announcements uh, this week as last. Hopefully that plays to our favor. Going to be opening with a little bit of a gap up, but inside of yesterday's range, if we stay here at uh, 3080. The overnight, you can see not uh, a whole lot going on. We did make a new high in the overnight, 85.75. So I'll be watching for that in the, the regular trading hour session here. But otherwise, nothing really to make note on. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of these <clears throat> gap lines. It's just too much clutter. We know that there's um, you know, a half dozen in this shallower uptrend. And then when we get kind of going straight up in the last couple of days, the, the gaps are bigger and a little bit easier to see. They're marked as well on the market profile chart. Breath and advanced decline, opening at 1.8 and five, we'll call it 565. That's much better. So you can see the negative 23% target, the dashed line up here. That's the target from all the way back down here in June, the 50% from June, that when we started this uptrend at the beginning of the year, we traded in a lot of extensions from highs to highs earlier on. So we started the uptrend with a low to high, we pulled back, didn't quite make it to the 50, and then and then never made a full pullback from there. Instead, we went from highs up to highs. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, highs to highs, and even then, we came down close to the 50, but just like this first one back here, we didn't quite tag it, but it was a better fit than doing a full halfway back retracement. And then when we got to this pullback in June, that same anchor point ended up being a clean touch. And you see that a lot with, um, you know, because of the algos and things like that, the an anchor point gets used and then that same anchor point you'll see used over and over again. So being at that negative 23% target, I, I like to look for signs of reversals or pullbacks. Given that we have open space above us, no resistance, we could make it to the next 61.8, which is also the negative 23 of an even larger retracement. Real, real big. Let's see if it comes up on the weekly. We'll go to a monthly. Uh, from... 2016 to 2018 pullback, and then you can see its target about 32.15. So doable by the end of the year for sure, especially going into the holiday season. But if we start to see a pullback here, and we start, you know, sign one is filling a gap. And then step two or sign two of a you know leading what would happen what would need to happen to get a larger pullback, you'd have to first you know fill 
the most recent unfilled gap, then break the swing low, and then come down and break a 61.8 of a long setup in this case, if we're going to be looking at a, a short pullback. So, we'll see how things <clears throat> unfold. Lots of swing trades happening. Um, I highlighted those in yesterday's video that I put in the dashboard. You know, everything's kind of tied into the, the the VIP membership guy. Um, swing trading and day trading. I certainly talk more day trading, but um, I do have a couple video lessons in the dashboard under the, the swing trading heading. Uh, and I put my watch list in there with uh, the market profile and um, touch on swing trades in the trade recap videos from time to time, I suppose, every couple of weeks. But sometimes, you know, when there's a lot of day trading action and volatility is higher, then I don't end up with as many swing trades, so there's not as much to talk about or do, which really, you know, for, for those who've been around um, the VIP area and trading sessions for a while, you hear me say it's a, it's a great complementary balance, if you will, because there's typically not a lot of overlap when day trading is really hot. Swing trading can be slow and vice versa. Which when you're looking at the, like when you're looking to take your strategy from the ES, say, move it over to the NQ or move it to any other market, especially in the futures world, you want to make sure that they're not directly correlated. If you're trading the ES and then you just add the YM, those markets pretty much trade in lockstep. So you don't, you're really just trading <clears throat> twice as many contracts in the same directional market, if you will. And yes, daylight savings is nice for those of us uh, that don't do daylight savings. And here in Arizona, we do not do it for 95% oh, of the state. Uh, we do get to sleep in a little bit longer or just have more time in the morning to do other things. So no five minute, first five minute bar play today because yes, we're gapping up, but we're gapping into a range. And I see that more times lead to kind of a back and forth situation versus a strong trending situation. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but you know, you, you have to play the odds versus play an emotional situation or an, a decision based on an emotion or, oh, I have to place a trade or, oh, I'm excited this morning. You have to let the emotions go and just trade systematic as, as objective as you can, which it's not always easy, but the more things that you can lay out in front of you, this is how I'm going to manage my trade. This is how I'm going to enter, exit, manage. And breath coming in a little bit from where it opened. It's, it's actually been... Uh, a little bit quiet a few days after the, the FOMC announcement. Um, 
we've had the movement, but it's it's come in the form of gaps. So that's where, again, if you've got even just a, a one or two swing trade positions, even if it's just in the SPY and you're just, you know, constantly trading directional in the SPY to, to take advantage of those gaps, then if you don't see any setups, you know, it, it sort of eases that feeling of, well, I'm still participating. I'm already capitalizing on the gap up this morning because I've got these swing trades. And so if I don't end up with a, a trade in the ES or the NQ or the Euro or whatever, then it's, it's not a huge deal. First little retracement here, showing to trade clean, enter 50, or down, traded at the 50, down to negative 23. The first 15 minutes, I other than that five minute play, I, I don't take any trades, just to get a read, get a feel for the markets, uh, get some support and resistance points, just kind of build a, foundation for the day, build some, some various levels, if you want to call them that, for the day that we can use as reference points. I find that to be helpful. And again, I, I've seen too many times getting, feeling the, the need or the urge to just open up your chart and place a trade. So in order to slow that down for me, I would do things like um, you know, look at the markets in the pre-market earlier than the open. Um, the one trade I will put on ever so often in the pre-market is a gap fill trade. If we're you know, typically an hour before, maybe 55 minutes before the open, just in case there's a, a, a number that comes out. And if there is a gap, then trying to capitalize by taking a trade in the direction of the prior day's fill you know, to get in a little bit earlier than the open can be a, a, good, a good play. You still need to have a, you know, a break in trend or a reversal pop up, but it's... Um, one of the pre-market plays that I'll use. I also like trading things like the Euro in the pre-market um, because it tends to be more active than um, you know, the ES or the NQ. It's also helpful in the first 15 to you know, make these observations of Okay, so far the market is trading cleanly. We've traded up to a 50, down to a negative 23, up to a 50. We'll see if this one's clean. And then we can use that information as the likelihood of the market to continue trading clean. Or if it's really messy and we're not seeing anything right at the open, you know, then I'll look for signs for that to continue or switch gears and it's it's that point where we go from a trending market to a range bound market or a really messy market to a clean market that I want to get active There's plenty of times where we open up one way and then half hour or an hour goes by or even a couple hours and then the market changes or shifts
yeah, daily pivots are certainly a useful uh, reference. I, I've looked at the pivots before. I don't necessarily execute my trades off of them, so I don't have the pivots on, pivot lines on my screen. Similar to market profile, I use it as a reference point to find areas of support and resistance, but I don't keep the market profile on my screen um, just because I'm not necessarily entering a trade directly based off of a number from that chart. So I try to keep my actual charts to only things that I need to enter, exit, or manage a trade. And if I don't need it for one of those three things, then I just take it off so that I don't kind of clutter my thought process. And that's a great exercise to go through your charts and clean things up. Ask yourself, okay, did I, have I, yes, I, may, I might look at this, like time and sales, for example. I used to have that on my chart six, seven years ago, maybe even longer than that. And it, it ended up just being a bunch of scrolling numbers. I really wasn't using it for any sort of action taking. Thus, it, it goes away. And then you can simplify or you can shrink your, you know, the amount of monitors you have if, if you've got quite a few and easier to travel with. I don't, I try not to do trading if I, you know, I'm not in a controlled environment with uh, quality internet. You know, I'm not just going to go trade from my phone someplace, but um it does make it easier to take my laptop and kind of set up my mobile office, if you will. So not a very fast-paced morning so far. Uh, manufacturing index at the top of the hour. Jolt's report as well. And again, we're trading inside of yesterday's range, which tends to lead to more back and forth. And at the very least, um, it can lead to more chop around your initial entry. So you want to be you know, that's another reason it's important to be patient at the start of your trade. Leave your stop alone. Don't just tighten it. Like if you came in here and let's say you entered at the, the 50 and then as soon as it was two ticks in your favor, you brought your stop to break even or minus two. Well, then just by the undulation at the entry point, boom, you get stopped out and then you're you're out before it, it does anything. So. Breath has uh, has come in to 1.2, and that's important because if the volume, the activity that's going into the stocks on the NICE is balanced, folks are buying as much, roughly as much as they're selling, so it's one to one, then it's harder for the market to trend. Same with the advanced decline line. If roughly the same number of stocks are going up as they're going down, it's going to take a little bit of time for the market to shift and you know, more buyers to step in or, or sellers to step out to develop an uptrend. So getting a feel for like the speed or the pace of the day or even the week can be helpful. You know, coming in, yesterday and then seeing these same size 
bodies where we kind of have a red candle and then we take it back green candle and then the bears take over and then the bulls push it back up and it's just back and forth you know that shows that it's, it's a fairly balanced market where it's hard to break out with with some force So we had one first retracement, uh, pull back to the 50, sell off all in the first 15 minutes. Second one, a little bit messy or dirty, broke the 61A just by a tick and then came down and did not break lows. So now that we've broken the 61A, we're going to get rid of that and draw the full halfway back. Initial range, pretty tight so far, five points, which can be a good thing. A small range can lead to a trend day, but we have to we have to see that follow through right away at the 30 minute mark. What else do we got here? Um, you know this on the five minute chart. So you've got this candle right here, the second candle, and then it's followed by these inside bars and. Whenever I see inside bars, whether it's a daily chart or an intraday chart, I'm always left with um, you know needing more or needing to see more. So let's say this was a a big sell-off leading up to this couple of inside bars. So then that tells me, okay, it's a bear flag if we had you know, some straight down movement and then some sideways inside bars. So I see the inside bars and I, I say, okay, well, I need some more information to determine are we likely to go down from here or up from here. Now, when you open up and you're 20 minutes in and you have a couple of inside bars and it's an inside day, that's sort of indicating, okay, if we can't move away from this area like break lows or break highs and even then I'd really like to see us break 3072s then we could get a lot of the same slower paced uh, movement in in the, the next part of the morning so getting a, some lower ticks Here. Interesting though, trading it. Well, what was it? It first touched about 750 and it was in a medium mid range tick. But see, you got this. Let's say this candle closes. You've got its tail that's still within 
the second candle's range. So this candle did not make a any kind of, you know, it broke the prior candle's high, but it's still within the range of this second candle that is currently the low of the day. Now we've got a break above this uh, 30, was it 78? No, no, it just tied it. Looked like it was above. Yeah, right here.
So we're kind of stuck right between these 250s with uh, the top of the hour coming up in, uh, what did I say, jolts and uh, non-manufacturing index here. We should at least be able to move outside of one of these 50s and then get a direction going. And up it is. No real swing low in here. All of these tails are, well, first of all, the wicks are, there's a lot of them here today. The bodies make up maybe 50%, you know, a small portion of the candle. You have a lot of wicks, especially on the downside. I should have had that one up a little sooner. Shoot, 3078 was that long and uh, just missed it. So yesterday, remember the overnight high was an 8575, yesterday's was an 83. We'll see, here's a high tick up here. 78 was, was the setup though. Eighty one is a short with the high ticket highs here. Yeah, Guy, when you have, that's a good question, when you have two 50s like I had drawn up here, um, and they're both, you're kind of stuck between them, once we break, it doesn't matter what direction, in this case we broke to the upside, then getting rid of the short and coming in and drawing the long off of the prior long setup that had just completed because it broke the short is the kind of the next the next leg. So our 81s um, getting a little bit of a reaction. We'll see how far we go. Need to get to a uh, 
79 for that first target. Um, so yeah, I just I just didn't have it up fast enough at 78, but you can't catch them all. And then now here, right about at the next long setup, can bring the stop down. So an 81. Eighty-one fifty, just to tighten her up a little bit. We've got this triple top up here. Wouldn't want us to see see us come up and make a quadruple top after three tests and then getting a sell off. So eighty-one fifty, and I'll just keep bringing it down and as we go and go a little further for a first target, but we'll get there. There it is. So first target on the short, and then I'm just going to draw the, the next, the full retracement, and that's an 81 and a quarter for the stop. So basic, so you basically end up at break even with your stop because, not because you're just moving your stop to break even as an arbitrary way to do it, using the chart prices to place your stop is, is a much better approach. Now I want to pay attention to where the full halfway back is, especially on a day like this where it's not that great. We've, here's another candle with a big tail. Bulls push it up, bears are able to push it right back down and that's very indicative with the breadth and advanced decline line the way they are, so. Bring our stop down again. And if we end up in this case going, we're kind of going straight down here. Um, might take, put one, 81, 78, that's three to one. Not quite yet. Um, but when we're at the, uh, when we're at the full halfway back for the day and a low tick, I'm going to put a, 78 and a quarter stop on just a quarter of what's left. There it goes. I no, suppose that's 70, sorry, 79 and a quarter. My eyes are going. <laughs> so we'll see if it can keep me in on 79 and a quarter. Just because we're at the opposing rather than letting it all come back to 81.50. Letting, and so now, okay. Now we have developed a little bit of a swing high here, so that's a good sign. So I'm gonna bring the whole thing down. Um, 70, yeah, 79.25. And then I'm gonna leave two contracts at, we'll do 80.50. So kind of two stop placements, one above the swing high and then one above the developing 61A, just in case, because we broke the halfway back long, now what the next step is to come up into the halfway back short and roll over and take us down to lows. But the range is so small already today, we're, we're pretty close to it. You could also use that swing high down and do a 78.50 if you want to get more aggressive. That's not a bad idea. It's just about three to one. And if we keep falling here, that's, I may take the whole thing like that, yeah. 
so 78 now and I'm going to put the whole f my all the contracts at 78 instead of split not bad so far high tick a day and a uh, triple top nice little nice little move I'm going to trail uh, two contracts here above each candle's high. So 75, 50. Okay, there it goes. So two are off at 75, 50. The rest is now a 77 and a quarter. Just because, you know, when you drop so far so fast um you don't always it's not always just a two candle bounce it could be a bigger rally and you know when you look at the reward to risk um that's you don't want to give up too much you know you don't want to let five or six points come all the way back great job david yeah um Taylor, there definitely becomes a point where you run out of contracts if you have three let's say i, I like multiples of three um you know taking one off at the first target that two points um and then having an aggressive and a conservative trail stop you know you can use um you know let's say you trailed every contract with the second you trailed every high when we started moving quickly up here with the second contract you can take it off and then you just stay conservative on that third, on the last contract on the stop. And all of a sudden you start doing it again. Whoa, we're going down quickly. Uh, let me get aggressive with that last contract and trail each candle's high. And then, you know, you're out for a good reward to risk on each contract. You know, you don't want to get in the habit of doing 10 contracts and taking eight off at plus two or plus four because then your reward to risk is terrible. And you would have to make up so much on the last few contracts to bring up your entire reward to risk on the trade. I'm gonna use this swing high, same one, same thing I did back here and drop it to a 74, seven, oops. 74, 75, it's going quick, 74, 25. Yeah, those high ticks at highs, you, you know, you gotta be, gotta be quick on the trigger. Um, okay, so now that we're below our first, first gap fill is a 63 and a quarter. That's down here. So I'm not saying that we're gonna run right to it. We could very well just dip in here we broke yesterday's low and then rally. So I'm going to use the most recent swing high down to lows, um, 74 and a quarter. And I know sometimes this, uh, you know, the more things get moving quickly, but um, it's good to go back. You can go back and review the the session. I'll, I put the recording in the dashboard so and slow things down a little bit. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that I missed the long, um, that 78 long. You know, I definitely wanted to be on top of it and be focused. It doesn't take much to to miss miss something if your eyes are. That's another reason I like to have a simplified screen because if my eyes are are staring over on on chart B on the right, I might miss a high tick over here on the left. So I try to keep things as condensed as possible. And so far, that high tick at highs is the high of the day. And we did get a new low tick at lows, 12s. We did. So now we have a low tick at lows. Um, so I'm going to leave my stop right at uh, 74 and a quarter. Sometimes I will take a contract or two off on a low tick or a high tick. In this case, I'm down to my, my last two. So I'm just going to leave both of them at 74 and a quarter. And if it hits, Good trade. If uh, we just touch the 50 and roll over, then um, 
and see if we can get anything else out of it, but you know, when you go from when you break highs and then you fall down and break lows, that's that can be a little bit of a wild market condition. See how this candle, the 30 minute high is here and the 30 minute low is here. Well, we broke highs and we broke lows in that same uh, swoop, if you will, or uh, push. All right, so as we start to roll over again, I like to look at the opposing setup. So the main setup is the short. Let me just glance at the opposing long. Okay, let's see if there's a bounce here. We do have a low tick at lows, but if we break lows, violating that low tick, then we can continue to make new lows. So a, typically a high tick or a low tick at lows is good for at the very least a short bounce. Um, in, in the case of the short earlier, it was good for a uh, quite a decent sell-off. But we'll see if this ends up being the low or not. No full halfway back made here on the short side yet. But 74 and a quarter seems to be the ideal stop placement and uh we'll see if we can break lows again and what did i say 63 and a quarter is the is uh friday's close here uh nope stan just the just that same short from 81s Yep, that's right. So to review that, the short setup, we came up here to highs and we had a high tick, a high nicey tick that lined up with the high price. And uh, we had this little swing low in the middle. And when I see a high tick or a low tick, I'm, I mean, it could be a one or two candle dip in between and then boom. I'm going, drawing my retracement, like very, very small, because a lot of times you you get a low tick or in this case, a high tick, and it gets a pretty strong bounce. There goes the 74 and a quarter. Gets a strong sell off or bounce, and there's not a lot of entries after that. So got to be right on it and so drawing a small setup I'm okay with that because then you know the stop in 81 your stop is going to be above highs you know highs were in 82 so the stop is 8250 you could even use 82 and a quarter one tick above highs so good you know good reward to risk because if you cross the range and go from the top of the range down to the bottom, I mean, your failure point is so close, breaking highs, which is only five ticks away from the entry. But your reward is catching a, catching a, 
a short or a fade about as close to highs as you can and then riding it all the way to the other side of the range or in the you know in today's case making new lows on the day so going with the short and then when you don't get any sort of big pullback you can start by drawing the full retracement and tightening your stop above the 618 but then when you see that the chart is very clean like all of these candles, every high is lower, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower, lower, lower. So you can just, you know, once the reward to risk gets in like the three to one. So when you get down closer to like a 78 to where you've got three points in the bag, well, the, the first target is the two points. So if you've got a couple of contracts left, it may not make sense to necessarily take the second one off it three points. Um, I do know a couple of traders who specifically who use two points and then four points and they trade three contracts. So they trail and, and I like I like the strategy for you know especially for three contracts because you can trail your stop at the same time that you have a two point target and a four point target. And then when the when your order comes when your trade comes down and hits that two points, okay, now you just have one less contract if you've got three. And then you can have four uh four points out there sitting out there. It's a good solid R multiple and you can still maintain the trail stop. So whereas three contracts is a 2R you know, four gives you a little bit more and allows you to keep keep trailing. And so then when you start going quickly down, you could, you know, trail the 618, see a little bit of a bounce, and uh, you know, maybe maybe you wait till four points. It's it's a little it can be a little bit um situation dependent when you want to start getting aggressive and saying, well, my stop is up here at, uh, we'll just say 78s, 79.50. But now price is trading down here at 75 and we've been trading down, straight down, lower high, lower high, lower high, do, 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 all the way down. Okay, let me start trailing aggressively above the swing highs, or I'm uh, sorry, trailing aggressively above the candle highs and then boop, get taken out when we get that when we get that bounce so that you're not giving back a 75 all the way to a 78 those extra three points and that's the exact same approach i'll use for um swing trading to where you know to the effect of like home depot finally taken out today because we broke the swing low down here and um in other cases if a market is moving strongly um, you can trail you know each candle's low when if it starts to go straight up just like you would on the on an intraday chart So yeah, so far we've got a a low tick that lines up with lows now. Um, so there are times uh, where if you just like down here, you just got the low tick. Wasn't exactly a double bottom, but you could you could come in and draw from lows to the very first swing high and get in you know 10 or 20 seconds after the the lower high tick now in doing that you risk a low tick being printed and then immediately getting a new lower price which will happen on a trend day so if you draw up let's say up here we didn't have any sort of triple top it was just something like this a high tick and then you drew up the retracement and boom 20 seconds later we set up in a uh, 50 percent that's okay 
to take that. But if it breaks the 618 and, and you get stopped out, don't keep taking those. Today, we had a high ticket highs that worked out here, the short, nicely. And so a low ticket lows, um, as Ryan pointed out, or Guy pointed out, you know, you can um, just take the setup, whether it's right away or, or shortly after. In this case, you, you do have a little bit of the uh, the opposing short in play at first, but looking to the pattern of the day is is the key, or like the pattern of the week thus far. You know, those kind of observations are are very helpful and sometimes it can be difficult to you know as i try to narrate some of my thoughts even so, sometimes that's that's hard to turn things into words but when you're sitting there on days by yourself at the open you know look for patterns of things that are occurring in the 15 first 15 minutes and look for those patterns to continue or look at glance at monday tuesday see what kind of candles were forming you know on the five minute or the 30 minute and then tomorrow wednesday morning you know see if the same kind of patterns are um, are continuing and then you can kind of expect those same kind of setups to continue Oh, great trade, Stan. Yeah. Yeah, for two contracts, have that first target and trail the second. Nothing wrong with that. And then just, you know, if you're conservatively trailing that second contract and all of a sudden the market starts to dive off a cliff, kind of like it did uh, over here, then just boom, get aggressive and be out. I mean, there's, like David said, once you run out of contracts, you run out of contracts and that's okay. Yeah, always good to have your broker phone number handy if you lose internet. Or like last uh, last Thursday, we had a, a little lockup in TOS here. And if you're using the Active Trader, you know, trading on TOS, um, some a lot of times it's just the charts that that would go out that maybe every couple of years I've experienced a, a freeze or a lockup here and, and toss but if you've got you know a backup broker or another like if you're trading on infinity or something um, then you have a little bit of disconnect between the two platforms in case one has a glitch or a lockup or a freeze you can you know glance over okay the prices are still moving on on the other chart or the other trade ladder but yeah i've had to call my broker once or twice and just close out a trade when there's a little bit of a hang up Because in the moment, it's hard to think clearly. 
And that's why we have, you know, kind of that systematic approach for closing out a trade, both to the upside and to the downside. You don't just want to have a a plan for how you're going to get stopped out if it goes against you, because you can get all kinds of excited if the market's dropping off a cliff and you're in a short and it's um, kind of exciting. All right, so here is a retest of lows. Remember, we had that low tick earlier. So you can see, you know, a decent little bounce, three, four points off of the low ticket lows. And if we get a double bottom here and we break this swing high, be able to take another little long. Seventy two. It's tiny. Seventy two and a quarter. And technically the short from the what would be the major swing high in this last half uh, 20 minutes is trading first so that means a pass on the long it is a double bottom but the short did trade first we didn't have a new low tick we got basically the same kind of double bottom in the low ticks, double bottom in the price, but the 73 traded first, so you kind of have to respect that.
So what I like to do for my for swing trades when we so I, I go every day you can um, you can just go into scan and then um, under just go by the G through R if you have toss new yearly highs and yearly lows and you know if you do something like uh, new yearly highs and the market is making new highs, you're gonna get a lot on the list. So a lot of times when the market's making a new high, I don't even bother doing my new high scan. I just do my new low scan. And in the meantime, you know, when we were back here, I'm recording both highs and lows. So yeah, I've got a basket from relatively strong stocks before the market made new highs. And that way I can, get a better idea of, okay, are these stocks just going up, kind of rising tide lifts all ships? And then I just watch for those to pull back. And it's interesting, so Home Depot is not making new highs after it's been pretty strong um, for quite a while. I've been in and out of this one a lot. So could be rotating out of um, some of the strong stocks that we that we have seen as we go into the holidays. Um, typically, like UPS and FedEx end up pretty strong around now. So looking at some of those for swing plays are good. But yeah, it's a matter of jotting down your highs and lows, um, new highs and new lows, and then uh, coming in four or five days later. And looking looking at that list again. Waiting for the ones to pull back. So there's really not much to do with those that you first put on the list. So I just put them at the end of the list and um, kind of sift through them just to glance and make sure that there's nothing goofy with any of them on the list. Um, make sure they're over 20 bucks and I'll look at a larger trend just to get an idea. Is it truly acting strong or is it just uh, some kind of outlier? But that's really all there is to my scanning process. It's uh, pretty simple. So another double bottom down here. Yeah, the 73. Um, I'm so I've got the the short up here, 76.50 is the halfway back for the day. Um, we're kind of in like a bear flag down here, and so that's why yes we have the the low ticket lows, and we've we've gotten a little bit of lift, but you know we've got this really big candle, the second 30 minute candle. We haven't made it up to the 76.50 short, um, so. Yes, a 30.73 is a valid long from the structural standpoint. We have a double bottom, a little swing high in the middle. We came up, we broke the swing high, and the uh, retracement short broke at 61.8. So um, there's certainly no fault in in taking a, a 30.73. Um, and just I'm just considering the context of we came up and broke highs on the day. Then we came down and broke lows, and we sort of only traded up to what were the prior lows in the first half hour or so. And then we've kind of been in this bear flag. And because we're, we've are we entered into the gap fill from yesterday, we broke yesterday's lows, so we're kind of the next stop would, would likely be a, the highs from Friday. Um, I'm kind of leaning a little bit more to the downside, but it is important to trade trade what you see.
yeah, that's, you know, feeling, David makes the point of, you know, if you, if the market gaps like yesterday and goes flat, you know, you're, you may have the urge to do something that you may not have otherwise done, like take a trade just because you want to be a participant. And if you have some swing trades going, then, you know, even if it's just, just an SPY trade or one trade on one directional swing trade, or, you know, it's nice to have a couple because there's always going to be bearish stocks and bullish stocks in, in any market. So, you know, if you had three or four swing trades, you don't need to have a ton. Um, you know, it takes more capital to hold swing trades. You can you can do options, and I have done options um, on various stocks. It, it, you got to be a little bit more precise with your exits. You can't sit as long. If the, if the market makes a big push up, and you have a call, closing out at the end of the day is going to be more advantageous than holding on for a couple more days and seeing if it goes higher uh, because you're going to lose out on that time decay. So as long as you can kind of be available at the close to do a check-in on those positions, um, options certainly give you more leverage and cost way less than uh, a you know buying shares of stock. So the high and low bubbles here on the Nicey tick, if you have, if you do a search for Nicey tick on E-mini Mind, you can get the code for this toss study. Here we are, another uh, quadruple bottom, I guess you'd call it. And then if you go into the studies and tick range settings, there's a, there's a couple of options for um, tick high, and then you can just check the show bubble tick low and check show bubble you can change the colors um, extreme ticks I have that yellow dot that comes up when it's outside of a thousand and a few other settings so new low on the day no new low tick so again it was kind of a subjective call to pass on the long but some of that stuff is, you know, it just comes with experience. Lots of tails on the five minute. Very messy.
I like it, David. Um, so let me see. I believe it's at 11 uh, Central. Um, so David mentions no trading after you know, basically the morning Eastern. That's right. So, you know, going into the lunch hour, um, sometimes between 11 and 1130 Eastern, you can get some, some decent setups. Um, but on the whole, yeah, for me personally, you know, the first hour and a half, that's, that's where most of my trading occurs both you know from the swing trading side you know putting on positions managing positions things like that and then day trades you know i'm if it's not a five minute gap play the first 90 minutes if i'm in a trade i'll stick around if there's something maybe there's something setting up but other than that i'm pretty much out till the close and then I will take a peek at things, manage any swing trades, and then usually uh, finish up some the watch list, market profile, do some trade recaps, stuff like that after the close. Yeah, how I came to determined that it was best to stop and kind of set a small time window to trade was just breaking my P&L up into 30 minute increments, taking all my trades from eight to, or from, uh, you know, the NICE open to 15 minutes after the NICE open and adding them up. What's my P&L look like? And then the next 15 minutes. And then from there, I went to 30 minute increments and looked at, okay, what's my P&L in the second half hour, third half hour, last half hour of the day. And I found that over lunch, over in the afternoon, you know, yes, there were winning trades in the mix, but when I netted things out, I ended up scratch or, or down. So it just wasn't worth my time to sit around all day waiting for that one good winner, maybe in the afternoon when I would end up making boredom trades or just not making wise decisions because I've been sitting there for so long twiddling my thumbs, not being focused. So that's another reason it's important to set a time window and then don't, I don't even, you know, look at the charts after hours in terms of like looking at the ES chart. Yeah, with with the daylight savings, you know, if you're if you don't do daylight savings or you have to think about, you know, sometimes like the European Open can shift a little bit. Um, and some of the like here in Arizona, we don't do daylight savings. So everything shifts an hour um, if you're have to get to to work or something um, or it might shift your schedule a little bit. But. Most places it only shifts an hour, so it's manageable. I kind of, by the time I get used to the 6:30 market open, then we shift back to 7:30. Then I get used to kind of 7:30, and then March comes and we shift back to 6:30. So this bearish engulfing candle with the long tail is not the most pretty um didn't quite engulf yesterday's can yesterday's daily bar but we came close to yesterday's high and uh we should be able to make it to 63s i would think i mean if the market is being lifted here by buyers who find this to be a advantageous spot, like it pulled back enough to where longer term investors are going to come in and it's not just going to be short term traders. Um, you could see a lift, but 
So far, the trend or the pattern has been to not fill these gaps. And so if we do fill a gap, that will be kind of a little red flag and should see a breadth and advanced decline line then that is more polarized one side or another. You know, right now we've got basically a balanced breadth and advanced decline line. So you would expect to see very sideways and even back and forth. And that's kind of what we've what we've had today, other than the, the one short from top to bottom, everything else has been fairly quiet and a, in a fairly tight range. I mean, yesterday was a 10 and a half point range. So far today, we're at about 12, uh, to a little over 12. The day before that was 15. And then we had to get back kind of in the, the 20, mid 20 point ranges. Yeah, I'm a very big, um, I'm big on batching or doing things kind of like I like to get real focused on something and then kind of go all in and then shift gears. So like a, uh, last week I was, or the week before I did uh, a bathroom remodel and, you know, it's nice to just you get all your tools out, you start going, your mind is thinking about it, and, you know, it's like, boom, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're just getting after it. And you're much more productive, and I find I'm much more efficient when my brain and everything is focused on that one thing, and you're not, you know, it takes half the time to get your tools out, set things up. Okay, where was I? So with trading, I find the same thing works very well. If I'm going to, you know, deep dive on something, it might be like a Wednesday night and I sit down and it's just five hours of that analysis of, you know, oh, I want to see if, I want to go through all of my stats and like we were talking about, I'm going to set up a chart, 30 minute increments, and I'm going to look at all of my P&L for the year and see what it spits out. You know, doing that in a big chunk of time where I'm just very focused uh, gives you a lot of insights. And the book Deep Work by Cal Newport is pretty good. It basically talks about just that when you're splitting your time, five minutes here, half hour here, looking at the charts, trying to kind of trade at work or you're trading and you got, you know, to run off and take the kids to school, it segments your brain and it becomes very hard to make those deep insights that you need um, and, and really get a lot done. So, you know, obviously life happens and there's lots of things that are pulling at you. So if you can separate things out or time block in a way to say, okay, first two hours of the day are going to be dedicated to trading. And then I can have some flexibility when I actually do my swing trading watch lists and finish my market profile and, you know, do a trade recap video or put together, you know, various pieces for, um, you know, things for, for E-mini mine, that stuff can be flexible, but the trading has to be this time of day uninterrupted and um, that's the way that I focus the best when I have those blocks of time that I can just be completely going at the one thing. On the 31st, we had a dip and, and came and just a, we came one tick away, I believe, from the the gap fill, and that was the last time, you know. And it was only a, basically a one day pullback. So then we gapped up, gapped up again, and then now we're we're pulling back in the sense that we broke yesterday's low. But um, yeah, when I have a 
a solid trade, I can tend to be a little more apt to keep trading if if there's signs that there's a lot of good trades setting up. But since that uh, first low ticket lows was made and we had a little bounce, we've just sort of drifted. You can kind of see a little bit of a channel, but no major major trades after that. So I think we'll wrap it up there for today. Um, if you have questions or if you want uh, more info on some of the swing trading stuff, uh, feel free to shoot me a note to Tim at eminimind.com and happy to happy to chat more and I can do more um, more videos and stuff on on swing trading as well. So um, hope everyone has a great week and uh, as always, feel free to reach out uh, anytime. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks.